For more on this NATO anniversary and the roles of American and other forces in the expanding war in Afghanistan, we are joined by someone who studies these issues closely. Professor Kimberly Martin, Chair of the Political Science Department at Barnard College, Columbia University. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. It's been a tough sell for President Obama to try to get more troops. In fact, he's backed away from asking NATO for that. Why doesn't NATO see the threat the same way the U.S. does in Afghanistan? I think there's a sense of division of responsibilities where the United States is expected to take on the military roles and Europe would prefer not to have, uh, many countries in Europe would prefer not to have that strong military role taken on. And in fact, uh, Obama's new plan seems to recognize that because what he's mostly asking for is financing and civilian support. It should be pointed out perhaps there's too much of a fixation on the numbers of NATO forces. They are in Afghanistan, but even those that are there are under some harsh restrictions by their own governments. Well, we and our, our very close allies, Great Britain, Canada, uh, Australia, and so forth, uh, ha don't have that many restrictions. But some countries like Germany really do. Um, they can't go out at night. Um, they are prevented from doing offensive military actions. And that severely limits what they're able to do in Afghanistan. So you're right. More numbers wouldn't necessarily help. I want to talk about Russia because uh, Russia and NATO have been at odds, uh, especially about the prospect of growing NATO. There are some who are suggesting, well, here's a way to solve that. Why don't you invite Russia to be a part of NATO. It's a fascinating <laughs> idea. Does it have merit? It's not going to happen anytime soon for two reasons. One is that NATO has very strong rules in place about what new members have to do. They have to have institutionalized democracies. They have to be able to have strong economies that can uh, contribute to uh, finances in NATO. And they have to resolve conflicts on their borders that wouldn't drag NATO in, which is obviously a problem right now for Russia and Georgia. And the second reason is to have Russia be a full member, you'd have to have interoperability between the the forces, um, and that would mean that Russian defense industry, Russian uh, military intelligence would have to be shared completely with NATO. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's an idea whose time hasn't quite yet come. Uh, there could be cooperation with Russia. Full membership is not likely. Of course, the major part of this gathering is to note that this is 60 years that NATO has been around. How would we rate the success of this organization? During the Cold War, it was incredibly successful. It did a successful job of deterring Russia from uh, ever uh, invading or interfering in Western Europe. It did a very good job of having a common defense and of working out rules so that the alliance could work very well together. The challenges now, of course, are that NATO is operating far from its base uh, geographical location. And so it's going to be interesting to see what that means for the future. Really? is operating in a world it never envisioned. I think that's absolutely right. Professor Martin, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.